Hello and welcome to another brand new video from the Rotac channel. I'm Rushen and in this video we are going to be pawning the machine called Codify from Hack the Box. This is an interesting Linux machine that allows us users to run our Node.js code and to test them out with an instant output function and it is something that is vulnerable on the system which we take an advantage of to get user access to find the user flag and to escalate our privileges from there to find the root flag as well. There are a couple of interesting proof of concept tools that we use which is super fun to use for me personally and I hope you will enjoy it too and there are certain things that you might have not stumbled upon before and this is the first time you will be getting your hands on it. So buckle up and let's see what's in store for us. And before we move forward, I would like to thank all my viewers, the supporters for the immense love and support I have been receiving on this channel. It surely and definitely motivates me personally to do more. So thank you again for all of y'all. And now without any further ado, let's dive in. Alright, so first of all, I'm going to make a directory in my downloads folder and call it Codify. We'll change the directory to that as well. And now we are going to ping the target IP address, which is 10.10.11.239, only using four packets. Okay, and next we are going to run the nmap scan. I'm going to use the switches VC target IP address and output this to a file called uh, port scan. Now I have already run this scan so let's take a look at that. Okay we have uh, two ports open on this target IP address which is 22 running SSH 8.9 P1. This means as always we can SSH into this target machine if we find user credentials. Well this version is uh, fairly recent so we cannot expect any vulnerabilities and moving on to port 80 which is a TCP port it runs Apache 2.4.52 and interestingly, you can see here that port 3000 is also open and it is running Node.js. These uh, Node.js apps are common targets due to vulnerabilities in code and uh, its dependencies. So we cannot see a domain name here right away. So we will use our web browser to go to the target IP address and see where it redirects to. It takes to codify htb we will update our hosts file accordingly ip is 10.10.11.239 save and exit just to make sure now if we refresh this page it takes to this application so very briefly what this application does is it tests your node.js code very easily. It says this website allows you to test your node.js code in a sandbox environment, enter your code in the editor and see the output in real time. So we can click on try it now. And if we come down all the way here, Codify uses sandboxing technology to run your code. This means that your code is executed in a safe and secure environment without any access to the underlying system. Therefore, this has some limitations. We try our best to reduce this so that we can give you a better experience. Now we gotta check our limitations right here. So it has some uh, restricted modules. The following Node.js modules have been restricted from importing child processors and FS. 
So very briefly, what child process means is that it allows us to spawn external processes that could uh, execute arbitrary code, which can be potentially malicious. And it allows us to exploit vulnerabilities in the platform or the system that uh, this site runs on. And we can explore further and uh, probably discover DOS attacks, denial of service attacks as well. So it's a good thing that they have restricted these modules. And what this FS means is direct file system access. So if we have access to the system directly, we can read, modify, or delete sensitive files and information. And it could also compromise integrity of the platform and other user information and data. And it can raise privacy concerns. So it's good that they have restricted these two modules to secure this environment to test the Node.js code. And on the bottom, you can see the whitelisted modules which can be executed and uh, view the output. Anyways, going back to the home page, we can see there is a about us and uh, there are some information about the code editor and it seems like it's running on VM2 library. So we got to check this out and it looks like the VM2 version is 3.9.16. So we can right away look for any available vulnerabilities for this particular version. So guys, if you do a quick Google search, you should be able to find this page, which gives us a CVE number 2023-30547, which explains about a VM2 sandbox escape vulnerability. And if you scroll down, we can see under the references, they have a proof of concept. We are going to click on that link. Okay, let's take a moment to read through this, at least the summary. It says, there exists a vulnerability in exception sanitization of VM2 for versions up to 3.9.16, allowing attackers to raise an unsanitized host exception inside this parameter, which can be used to escape the sandbox and run arbitrary code in the host context. Now this version matches the version running on uh, the site right there. So we can copy this code, go back here, go to the editor, paste. We will change this to echo rotec and click on run. And as you can see, the output is given right here. Now let's try some Linux commands. Let's do ls dash la. All right, cool. We'll also do who am I? SVC. All right, so now that we have this, we'll go to the reverse shell generator. And on the generator, let's change some settings. We'll use bash and the shell we can use bash my machine ip address is 10.10.16.25 we can use port 9001 no problem all right looks good we will copy this into our clipboard go right here use echo paste the code then we are going to use bin bash semicolon hash and we are going to use the separator right here okay let's check this code once again we have the echo command within double quotes bash my ip address the port number it ends right here looks good and on our local machine let's set up the listener netcat nlvp port is 9001 listening and fingers crossed there we go we have a shell seems like a dumb shell that's cool all right so we have some information i typed who am i then the id and the print working directory commands now, if you check this out, there are so many directories and so many files that you can work with. Now, for the sole purpose of making this video as short and interesting as possible, I'm going to tell you where to go next. So I started thoroughly enumerating the file system, this entire system, 
and buried within the web directory, I noticed an interesting file name called tickets.db. So this is located at var triple w contact. So this is the file I was talking about, tickets.db. Let's check this out. So there are many interesting things to um, check out right here. If you're familiar with this format, you will know that this is a SQLite database file. Now what's interesting is, can you see this username and the password hash right next to it? So do you remember when we did the port scan, it revealed us that SSH is available. So we can use the username right here. And if we crack this hash, we will have a clear text password. And using that, we can SSH into this user and take this to the next level. So basically, I'm going to copy this hash. To my local folder. And on the local folder, we'll create a file called um, hash.txt. This is the one. We're going to write and quit. If we do cat, we can see it right here. And next, you can run hashcat or John the Ripper to generate the clear text password. So for this instance, I'm going to use hashcat. The parameter is set to 3200. File name is hashcat.txt. And the word list I'm going to use is located at usr share folder then word lists we can do uh, rock u dot txt and you can simply run this one all right so the hashing is done and the password is cracked as you can see we have a winner right here the password should be spongebob number one so i'm going to create a note and save this information call this file notes username is uh, Joshua password is spongebob1 all right so now we will SSH into Joshua domain name is codify dot htb password cool we are in the machine right now if we do ls you can see the user dot txt file and this should be the first flag you are looking for and now to escalate the privileges so we can find the root flag let's find out what are the permissions that this user has so seems like we can execute this script using this user that we are currently logged in as so let's find out what's in this file I'm going to copy this and we'll use cat now you can definitely take your time on this and go through this script and see if there's anything wrong. What caught my eye is this particular line. So this segment of the script evaluates the user supplied password against the authentic database password. And there is a vulnerability that lies between this particular config in simple terms but the problem here is this double equal signs because in bash this conducts pattern matching instead of a direct string comparison consequently the use input is treated as a pattern and if it contains glob characters like the asterisk sign or the question mark you know these two it may advertently match unintended strings for example, let's say the database password, the actual password is set to like password123 uh, and the user input is like a asterisk sign. 
this particular pattern will match it will succeed because this asterisk sign matches any string and it leads to unauthorized access so basically this simply means that we can systematically attempt to brute force each character of the database password the authentic real password and if you're interested to learn more about how you can safely do things within bash you can always come to this github page this is the link and read more there are so many information here all right so to brute force the database password the authentic password we are going to use a script that is written in python so you can find that on this github page right here we are going to go to the file and simply copy the code and in here let's find out whether we have permissions to create a new file on this directory i assume not too soon Yeah, so definitely, like I assumed, this directory only has root access, so it's very restricted. Let's go back. We can use the TMP, the temporary directory, to do this. We can use the text editor like nano and create a file called brute.py, paste the code, save and exit. And now all what is left is simply to execute the file. All right, so as you can see, character by character, the password is being revealed at the very bottom. So now we will try to use this password to gain root privileges. To do that, I'm going to simply type su and the password is And there we go. If we type who am I, it says root. If we do ls, all the stuff in the temporary directory is right here. But we don't want that. Change the directory to root. And we have root.txt. This is the final flag you are looking for in this machine. All right, guys. So this is how you pawn the Codify machine on Hack the Box. I really hope you learn something valuable. Obviously, there are other ways to get around and find the root flag as well as the user flag. But these are the methods and tools I used and I really hope it will work out for you as well. As always, you are welcome to raise questions and concerns about this particular box in the comment section and I'm more than happy to get back to you. Also, if you find this video useful, please make sure to drop a like. And in the future, you will see more of these videos from Hack the Box. So you don't want to miss them out. Therefore, please make sure to subscribe to the channel as well. So I'll catch you guys in another video very soon. Until then, take care of yourself and take care of each other. Peace.